It's going to be sick, guys. Tell your friends to join us. Introducing our players in the upper left, in the blue, the former world champion. He is Rogue. And his opponent down here in the bottom right, in the red. It is classic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny because Classic is one of these guys where if we cast our minds back a little bit, you know, he's kind of been the forgotten Protoss, we sometimes call him. He's the guy who gets kind of overlooked because he's like this effectively brutal Protoss player, but he doesn't have the same flashy, distinctive styles of someone yeah. like an SOS. Uh, you know, he's not as, uh, I guess, kind of like just in the, the land of defensive players, someone like Stats, where at least Stats yeah, gets his identity yeah. as defensive, but Classic can play the very aggressive game and he can play the very defensive game. And he will, depending on his opponent and where he feels like the matchup is, you'll see him. I, it has been a while, but he used to cannon rush. He used to mix that in a lot in Heart of the Swarm. Yeah. He'd mix in like all these weird timing attacks and rushes. So he's got a lot of range to his play. I would almost put it like this. Uh, this is at least the way I, I think about him whenever I'm casting him is he, he's really good at leveraging specific situations. Yeah. He doesn't come in there putting all his chips on the table and saying, I hope this works, or I think I'm gonna hard counter you. And you're right when you say he, do he doesn't play like stats where he's just sort of staying back and watching everything. He seems to come in there with those timings and, and try to at least, try to at least cripple you. Yeah. And strategically, I mean, the range of play he has to play that style, it's, it's very big, it's very, very broad, as is Rogues. And that's why I'm so fascinated by this match because there's so much different uh, choices that can be made by both sides. Rogue here going for a very quick third hatchery is going to be looking for the economic opening there, of course, taking that down. Starts the queen on the natural. You delay your queen in your main base by a little bit, but you get that third base up nice and fast. And this just gives you a good economic kick off. And uh, it's definitely going to be a nice beginning here for Rogue. Of course, you still get a decently timed Zergling speed and the probe will spot exactly what's going on the early adept on the way to scout and the Stargate play from Classic. Definitely what we expect. Stargate, Oracle of Phoenix. That's the typical opening. It's the next tech. It's what they do after that. That's what we've always got our eyes on. The Protoss player is really the actor in these early few minutes. And it's not until you get up to that lair tech, either a lot of roaches with roach speed or hydras or banelings. That's where the Zerg takes control of the mobility and the map control. But this early phase, Pretty much everything goes to the Protoss in terms of they're the one trying to poke around and try to catch the Zerg off guard. It's kind of cool the fact that these guys are facing off again, although it's scary that it's this early on <laughs> uh, yeah. in the tournament, right? I mean, we're in day two of the WCS Global Finals, but um, these guys have had a history, right? And not just a history of, oh, they've, you know, they've either practiced uh, you know, um, against each other um, or encounter each other on the ladder, but they've encountered each other in, in high stakes tournaments. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm very curious to see how this best of three is gonna look compared to their previous matches. Yeah, I mean, when you've got this repeated run in with an opponent, you get to know each other so well. And it's this weird thing where even if you're not necessarily teammates, it's like playing against a practice partner or a teammate where players are gonna be much more likely to make a hard read from a, a small piece of scouting information. Yeah. You know the opponent so well, but at the same time, sometimes you'll psych yourself out, you'll overreact or underreact to something. So there's definitely gonna be some tricky uh, turns here and twists throughout. We've already got the Oracle coming out onto that map uh, nice and early, is gonna be checking out what's going on. The Robo does go down behind this, as well as that Twilight Council. So looking like probably an Archon drop follow-up. Yeah, so the Archon drop, uh, this is, was, was mapped out pretty quickly in, in Legacy of the Void, and I love it. It's it's such a strong build because you come out, and since the Archon is like 99% shields, you come out there, you can try to get any damage you can, whether that's Creep Tumors, Overlords, maybe you kill a Queen, probably not, probably drones, probably Lings, other stuff like that. Yeah. And then you juggle it back out with a Warp Prism, and it's, as long as you don't screw up and lose the War Prism, which you really just can't do in, in pro gaming matches, it, it, it's it's pretty much a low risk build that does generally reap some benefits. But out of all the Zergs in the world, I feel like Rogue has by far the most experience with this. Yeah, absolutely. Rogue has seen this many times. Right now, though, we've got a lot of Adepts coming in. They're going to commit there. Zergans get a quick wrap around the Queens, force the Oracle to pull out. The drones have been pulled away so far. Pristine defense from Rogue. Those drones still evading, but they do go back. The Adepts shade back to safety. And at the end of that, an Oracle's been bruised and Adept's gone down. 
and the trade, a bunch of mining time, but look at the production tab. Oh my, Rogue is whoa, actually whoa, whoa, whoa. looking for a Nidus Worm here. Okay. Oh, now, man. which kind of Nidus Worm is this going to be? They're, they're, it's straight on the front of the natural, I, I, I think. I think so. Yeah. It, where's, where's the Robo Bay for the yeah, Protoss? he wants to take out the robotics. If yes, okay, so this is, what this strategy is, it looks like it shouldn't work, and, it, and we were all kind of caught off guard by it, and we saw it in IM Katowice, and it kept happening over and over again. And this actually tells me that Rogue is going to just use what worked against Classic before. So you pop out, and you mow down the Robo. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, he's going to go on. for a surround. That's very ambitious here. And the Zergling goes to spot the natural. The Nidus Worm doesn't go down. Yes, it does. It's going to start there. And as you were saying, we the aim is to get rid of that Robo See, because the Immortals are what yes. counters this build. If the Protoss can get two or three Immortals out, it's done. But there's no Immortals. There is an Archon oh, on point. Hold on, hold on. A lot of Zealots as well. Okay, he should be able to get the Transfusers down on the Nidus. More Roaches coming out. The Immortal halfway done. Probes surrounding and many more getting mowed down. The Archon on the far right. Oh, the Immortals about to come out. We've got Stalkers on the right-hand side. Shield Batteries about to finish. The Probes withdrawing from the battle. Classic here with some amazing defense so far. One Immortal able to pop. The Prism ferrying that arc on a safety, but it's getting dangerously low. Those Shield Batteries are finishing. And with the Immortal out, if a second one gets out, that's it. This rush is toast. But for now, more and more Probes being forced into the fight. The Immortal about 70% complete here. The Immortal still, are the Robo almost uh, I'm going to be taken out, but there's still so many units that are being warped in. Instead, Rogue's going to try to move down behind the mineral patch. Here comes that second Immortal, and it looks like this will be held here by Classic. Flawless defense here from Classic. The Archon does go down there. A slight mistake, but the Nidus Worm has been held. 43 drones to 36 probes. Classic did take some economic damage throughout that. He's going to need to either counter swing across the map with some pressure or take his own third again very soon. That night is worm in the corner of the main, not being spotted. The Stalker oh. Oh, barely oh. has vision, but he's not paying attention. Yeah. He's distracted, tight, trying to take his third base. Just because it's on the mini map doesn't mean he sees it and he's going to respond right away. And in fact, it might be the second one that's going to do even more damage. No, excuse me. He wasn't he's going to scout, he's gonna scout to with one roach. That's so smart. Look, he could come right in here. Get a glimpse. Uh, and yeah, behind this, yeah. he's droning up. He's going to have to pull those roaches out yeah. there. No. Rogue's just trying to buy himself time here to drone up behind this. As you pointed out there, Tasteless, yeah. he's going into the swarm host behind it with the infestation bit. That roach actually going to grab a couple of probe kills. So this is just kind of delaying tactics, distracting, because that prism, those couple of immortals, that's going to be huge harassment yeah. pressure from Classic. Well, just the fact that he popped out the one roach, scouts in there, that, that keeps that war prism behind a little bit longer because now it's going to be Classic turn. He wants to fight back. And with these two immortals, it's so difficult to fight with roaches. Immortals already counter roaches, but when you can juggle them in and out of the war prism and move away from the roaches, even better. Yeah, I mean, this is a very different style of play to what we saw from Nurture as well. So people might have looked at those Swarmers and said, they don't seem that strong. Classic just seemed to have the answer. But remember, that was a Hydra Bane into much later Swarmers. This right. is a low economy Roach play, some Zerglings out, and he's going to be looking to add Swarmers a bit later. But for now, it's all about this Immortal drop pressure, picking off some drones, picking off a Roach. And these Queens actually taking a lot of damage, but that Prism staying way too long. What are you... Oh, Oh classic. my God! He's going to go for the cool. recall. See you in the next episode. <laughs> All right, he's out. The War Prism gets away. The Immortals are back. But there's an opening here. Rogue yeah. could come in and try to hit this Nexus. I don't think this is going to work. It seems like there should be more than enough as long as Classic reacts in time. Force fields are there. You got to watch out there. Yeah, Rogue here. You see, now he's maintained position. He's pushed back the pressure. The swarm host into the production. Right. So 10 Swarm host coming in. And the idea is if you get creep out far enough, you can start launching those into the expansions, doing damage. And you can have a lot of Roaches and Ravages, which is already a very frightening army if you force the Protoss into the middle of the map. In a choke point here, the Roaches have to withdraw. They've got to pull back. But oh, oh my man. lord, the distraction more than enough there. Classic starting to falter here in the chaos of this match. That is a huge amount of damage. Nine workers going down. Classic realizing this is a big mistake. He wants to counter punch. He's going to try and chase these roaches down. That prism ferrying those immortals on top of the roaches takes about four or five out on the retreat. Now, this is important because he actually chases Zerg back. One thing about Swarmhouse is if you can try to keep them at a distance, 
instance, it's harder to utilize them. A lot of times, yeah. the Swarm Hosts, you want to try to get them to activate and then back off or try to move around them. Uh, and it looks like we might have them meeting up right here. Yeah. Rogue needs to get some defense, because if he loses these Swarm Hosts, he's, everything he's invested in is for nothing. And you talked about it. He's wasted the Locust Wave. He can wait for those to expire, and there is a long cooldown. They land on the Zealot. The Zealot picks into the Prism, and not a single unit dies. Those Locusts are about to disappear, and Classic will use that time to put on the hurt to assert map control and to threaten Rogue, and that's important because he's got no workers. He's on 38 workers to 58 Tasteless. His economy is down in the dumps right now. He's trying to hide his probes from the Zerglings, knowing this base is going to go down, and he's got to make it work with this attack. Immortals, Archon, Zealots, a lot of Immortals. The Corrosive Vials trying to defend. A lot of Queens coming forward. Rogue has to kite this backwards. A lot of Ravagers getting trapped up against the wall. Push to comes to shove here as Classic moves forward with a Swarm Host flanking in from the right. Rogue Rogue simply needs to hang on. The third base from Classic has already been destroyed. And it looks like as this army continues to uh, push in and surround this control, even perfect control from Classic might not be enough. He's coming in a little bit further forward. All these Immortals so low on HP. Oh, another Immortal falls. The Archon going down. The Zealots are going down as well. And that looks like it's going to be it. Rogue there coming in with the Locust from the left-hand side. The Roaches from the right manages to wear that push down. And Classic's army has fallen to the wave of Jeez. Ravager Miles. <laughs> a That's very it. nice play there from Rogue. Great recovery after the initial Nidus Worm was held. Dude, he was so good at how he handled every single situation back there. I mean, first of all, I think had that Archon not been right there next to that Nidus, there would not have been yeah. uh, enough time to save the Robo. Then, when he holds it off, that sick, uh, the second Nidus play in the main where he pops out one Roach yeah. as kind of a distraction. Um, even though Classic came all the way across the map and did damage with his own Immortals and then recalls out, saving everything, Rogue had that plan with the Swarm Host. He was coming in there. Classic tries to push around, and then Rogue immediately does this brilliant counterattack with just enough flings to take out the third base. That forces Classic in the situation where then he has to win with a push. And we know Rogue is good. He's crafty enough. He's smart. He's got the finesse and the way he controls his army. He, he eventually holds that off, sandbags the push, and wins the game. Yeah, great play from the Zerg there. Last year's champion, the reigning BlizzCon champion, wants to go out of this group in first place, and he's only one map away from making it happen. A couple of crucial points in that game that you just talked about, of course, Tasteless. And Classic now going to have to lick his wounds. He's going to have to come back stronger in the next map. It's going to be Blue Shift, and it will be exciting to see which builds the players are going to bring out. This really, this really emphasizes how scary Rogue is, to be honest. The fact that he did the same, yeah. at least, opener against Classic that beat Classic in the uh, IEM Katowice Finals, and then Classic defends it, and he still wins. He's like, no, 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 I got a plan B, I got plan C, I got every letter of the alphabet, I got a plan for that with this build. Brilliantly done. Anyways, guys, let's go into game number two, Rogue versus Classic. Right now, Rogue with a 1-0 lead. In the upper right, in the red, in the blue, the world champion of 2017, he is Rogue! Mostly the blue. <laughs> in the bottom left, in the red, our Protoss player facing his nemesis, he is Classic! And just to rehash, of course, about that last game, a couple of crucial moments, you know, the Immortals overstaying their welcome. It was a nice recall, as you said, but losing the presence that those Prisms, uh, the Prism Immortal was exerting on Rogue side of the map was huge. And of course, the Ling run by, leaving the wall unmanned. It's so funny because it's something you never see yeah. happen in a static game. But the moment there's Nidus Worms surprising you here and there, you're trying to yeah. take your third while you're counter pressuring with your Immortals. Suddenly, Lings get in, nine probes go down, and that really just took the wind out of Classic Sails at a crucial moment in that game. So Classic's not going to be able to make those mistakes again. Like, no. Rogue is going to punish you so hard if you mess up like that. Well, he just shows how elastic um, his strategies really can be. I mean, he's really able to just mix it up and you throw anything to him, he can pretty much hammer together a response. I mean, Zerg is really a race that is constantly trying to react and react in such a perfect way that suddenly the player, no matter what the strategy was, zoned themselves out of the game progressing any further. Not always, yeah. but but sometimes. That's, that's yeah. definitely 
Oh, I, you kind of mold yourself around your opponent in that yeah, way, isn't it? Yeah. Where you kind of want to get a feel for what they're doing. So you're yeah. looking for what they're doing and you're kind of just waiting for them to lock themselves into something that you can take advantage of. And I mean, Rogue's the best at it. He's yeah. so good at just adapting to everything that's going on. I love that second pile on location. So classic <laughs> saying, look, where can I make sure you won't scout my tech? If the Overlord goes in, it's going to go oh, to look the at main. That. He's even pulling the probe over here. Yeah. Just in case something were to run in. Because of course, that's cute. You, yeah, okay. That's actually a very subtle, but a very cool thing here from Classic. It was cool um, when we were at IM Katowice uh, talking about that Nidus Worm strategy when all the, all the games were done, everybody's back at the hotel. Because yeah. some people were saying, man, the disrespect, the Nidus right there in your face. <laughs> some people interpret it as, yeah, yeah. You're so bad. Here's what I'm doing. I don't care. Where, in fact, it's actually a very technical rush that's designed yeah. to, to completely destroy one key building that then knocks the player out of orbit. There's no response to the flood of roaches inside those, the base. Those two immortals, they were the problem. This, I was saying it from the start, you know, the second one gets out and you're toast and it's not even just holding the rush. We saw how scary they were on the counter attack. It's like when you're on low economy roaches and a couple queens, immortals are the scariest yeah. thing. Like you cannot get on top of them. They can just start a step backwards. You'll never close the distance. They've got so many hit points, so much damage. And it's an absolute killer. Now Classic here is going robo first on this map. We saw SOS try this yesterday. Didn't quite work out against Errol, and oh, oh my whoa, lord, whoa, that whoa, is whoa, a whoa. robotics bay. Disruptors or Colossi, I think it'll be Colossi, but there are some really funky disruptor players right yeah. now that are coming out, like the really fast is, rushes. I feel like it should be Colossi, but maybe there's, he's got a, an ace up his sleeve here. Maybe he's got a build yeah. where it's so weird. And, you know, some strategies in StarCraft, even if you see it and you know it's coming, it's hard to stop. Yep. Even like, for instance, when we saw the, the Nidus Worm, it's like, it's right in front of your face. And it's, it's you got a little bit of time, buddy, and then you gotta have an answer. But then there's some strategies you can try to pull off where no matter what, oh, if oh. they haven't seen it before, it's bad. Hold on here. We got these links coming in, Ooh. taking out this Adept. And this might mean oh. that the strategy the Classic's gonna try to do might not even matter. Those lings in the main base, they managed to slip by there. Of course, the Adept did try to pull back from the wall off to save itself, but lots of probes are going down here. The Stalker gonna add a little bit of range oh. damage from afar. Now that is a decent Zergling commitment. <laughs> if he, he doesn't see it yet, but I think when he oh, goes over here to the links, that's he's shame. inadvertently gonna scout this. Oh, yeah. this sucks that's for Classic! So bad for oh. Classic there. Okay, so here's the thing. You know, this strategy, you don't see it every day, right? Which means Classic yeah. says, when it's time to pull off this strat, I'm gonna be ready. But then the Lynx got it, and they scouted it, and they killed probes. Such a mistake to pull the Adept out of the wall, and you've got to just sacrifice that Adept and wall off behind it. Even more Zerglings here right now, gonna try and force the issue. I mean, he's got to just build a shield battery behind it. There we go, okay, Warpins will do the job just fine. But it's been spotted, it is a disruptor drop play into what is meant to be normally a, a big six or seven gate push. Lots of sentries, stalkers, Adepts. And of course, the splash damage from those disruptors, amazing, amazing versus queens, amazing versus roaches and ravages. And that's really where this push tries to do the damage. Of course, the disruptor speed, or sorry, the warp prism speed, allows you to drop those disruptors into a mineral line yeah. and just blow up a lot of drones or hunt down the queens. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like, um, for the people who are much older watching this, it's like a reaver drop in StarCraft 1. You yeah. come out and you, you basically go in there and just start hitting various locations. and. You know, the War Prism, we're used to seeing Archons and Immortals, but Disruptors are a perfectly appropriate choice to combo with a War Prism. Yeah. Oh, oh, maybe not like that, though. I mean, oh. those Lings clumping up like that actually do take a pretty nasty hit. Uh, but of course, remember, there is a slight delay on the Disruptor. When it drops, it can't yeah. fire for about a full second. So it doesn't allow it to just drop on the Lings, instantly blow them up, which is why Rogue is kind of following it like this. And notice he pulls oh, back dude, most of so them. Oh, dude, he's so good, yeah. Look yeah. at this. And Nice transfuse as well. Saves the queen. Rogue says, no free damage for you, buddy. Is up to 60 workers behind this. Is going into Hydra production. Meanwhile, Classic going into Colossi, which is very good versus Hydras, but I think numbers might be the issue. I mean, just look at it. Equal army supply now, <laughs> yeah. but Rogue is mining so much more money than Classic. Well, it seems like Classic, behind this uh, attack, again, nothing's really worked for Classic. I like the idea of the strategy. Hasn't really paid off, paid for itself, anything like that. What he's doing is he's making a bunch of gates and he's gonna come out here and try to push. Now, I'm a little bit worried because it seems like Rogue's the kind of guy that can handle this so far. Um, Ooh. Oh, that was actually pretty sick. Taking out the eggs, that's one, a much actually yeah. more efficient, easier way to do that. Because up until then, he hadn't done much of anything. No, not at all. It does slow down that, of course. It, the, the money gets refunded for Rogue as it counts as a cancel, but 
It ends up taking out about four, five hydras. Ling's here on the natural wall, and a depth or two might have to be warped, warped in. But the attack is going. It's an all-in. Two disruptors, two colossi, a bunch of sentries. Those colossi gonna roast the zerglings, and it's all about the disruptors Whoa. trying to find a value. Okay, here's the Ooh. thing. The push is starting. So right now, Rogue, he needs to be ready. He can't take too much damage. Classic's goal is to yeah. take out this position and eventually squish Rogue into just two bases. I mean, the hydra upgrades, some of them are done. There's a few Ravages in here as well. Oh, a big bile lands on those gateway units. The Colossi, though, such a threat. Look at those lasers. The Roaches and Ravages are the only unit. They're not good against the Disruptor. Falls there. Great focus fire from the Hydras. Only one Disruptor left on the right-hand side. That is just a flood of Zerg units. The second Disruptor gets focused down. Great hot pickups here from Classic. He's trying to warp in in the back. I don't know if there's going to be enough Protoss to hang on. <laughs> there's just one Sentry somehow over in the corner here. The push is coming back across, Ooh. and it looks like he might actually have done it. 18 drones down. Wow. He needs to get the Warpers and back up those Hydra Snipe it. No more reinforcements will come. Yeah, these Colossi are all that's left here for Classic, and I don't think it's enough. There's too much creep. There's too many Queens. Of course, only one Colossi can fit in that War Prism at a time. <laughs> He's trying to there's, get them out of there. There's no more map to micro this back on. It's yeah. at the bottom right side of the screen, and that is the end of that. Ooh, classic recalls out. He's trying to refill for another push. But look at the gas count. He's basically out, making a few sentries. Yeah. I mean, he was very close to breaking Rogue there. Rogue's down to 42 workers. Like, this was a scary moment. And it makes me, I mean, I've got to ask the question. If he didn't let those lings in earlier, if this wasn't scouted so far ahead of time, I mean, what if he started picking off queens with that disruptor dog? Rogue was so well prepared this game, and yet this is still such a close push. Now, though, I think Rogue has a bit too much breathing room. He's got a lot of time to just kind of recover and build up. And it looks like just Roach Hydra is his choice. Not going to bother with Corruptors. I think he's just going to go for kind of raw numbers, flank the army, collapse on it, and just use that overwhelming swarm. Yeah, I think you summed it up. Oh! oh! God! Oh, that's terrible. <sighs> that's, that's... You don't okay. have a lot of things to work with, but Classic <laughs> just threw away one of his most valuable yeah, yeah. tools there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. It was like the game was going bad, and but he was being chased by the killers, and then he took his car keys and he threw it in the lake. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, well, this isn't this isn't going to end well yeah, for that, you. Yeah, that's, that's so, <laughs> the scene. It's like there's the gun, the car keys, and the banana, yeah, and you yeah. pick up the banana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I think what you were talking about earlier, though, Pig, oh. you, you basically nailed it. it. He had this strategy where he wanted to drop uh, the disruptors and start doing damage, and, and that's pretty smart because Protosses just don't do that now. It's so rare. And so the idea is that Rogue goes, what? And suddenly disruptor shots come out, and, and he has to try to get ready, and meanwhile, the scary push is coming. But those Lings got in there. I mean, we can talk all day about that big battle and how epic it was, but in reality, it was really about the first few minutes here. Exactly. I mean, there's one what last wave here of all-in attack. A lot of zealots are in there to tank. A lot of sentries to create force fields. The problem is they haven't had that much time to gather up energy. There's one Colossite down because of what happened earlier. He's waiting for the Warp Prism. It's going to bring a single Disruptor, which is going to add a lot of threat against the Roaches and Ravages, but it's just one. And that single Disruptor, it's going to be very hard to get reliable shots. Of course, the Zergling is going to provide a screen against that. Here we go, a collapse in from Rogue, looking to push back this army. Lands a few Biles, wastes a few force fields, and disengages Rogue being so patient, he's almost max. He's got a huge ball of Zerg units, dodges the disruptor shot, and just continuing to disengage and knock down the force fields. This is what you've got to do as Rogue. He's coming in from all sides. Once again, disengages. Classic fighting as well as he can, but the rain of fire begins to land. The sentry count is falling. That is just too much a Zerg tasteless. So crazy. Look at this Rogue just toppling the remainder of Classic's army. And I think that's basically it. I mean, Rogue is going to remax so quickly here. Classic with no third base. There's really no way to recover from here. And that's it, 2-0. The reigning champ shows he's still got it. Comes out of this group crushing through with some very, very nice games. And he will be going out in first place from Group D. Really, really impressive stuff. And I know we've been talking a lot about Serral. We've been talking a lot about Maro. But don't forget about Rogue. He's the guy that won it all last year. And he's reminding everybody why here today from that series. One of the smartest players out there. He's really got a, a gift and a talent for this game. It's the way he picks his build orders. It's the range of strategies. And 
As we saw there, I mean, his Zerglings finding ways in in both of these games, finding small holes in Classic's game plan, and Classic, no doubt, feeling a lot of regret about that Adept deciding to abandon its station in the Wall of the Natural in game number two. Some great builds from both sides, but the Zerg player does stand triumphant. Great win there from Rogue, and I think a lot of his fans feeling very inspired after that one. Of course, guys, we're going to hear from the experts down on the couch with Kolaris. That's right, congratulations to Rogue actually advancing on forward. I'm just getting comfy here as we continue things on. And actually, almost finished the game, I suppose. And Rogue advancing on into the round of eight. What a series of players, what a set of players we have moving on in first place from our groups so far. It's almost perfect considering our groups. It's so actually perfect, just to make sure everyone understands that, right? Sarah without losing a map, Mara without losing a map, Stats without losing a map. So that's the best of every race. And then we got Rogue. Who who's a map. defending champion, he did lose a map. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been as dominant this year. <laughs> people, <laughs> people who are not as dominant this year are losing a map. Yeah. And that's, that's how that goes. And then we get into the second tier tomorrow. That's right. Now I have a different microphone. Magic. The magic of technology. How many microphones do you need? Uh, a microphone for every break you're going to throw to? Oh! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, He's got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> for it one. Sense. <laughs> <laughs> it <made no> Look, <laughs> if Nathaniel stayed, we wouldn't have gone through as many breaks. All right? it's, oh, that's uh, for sure. But anyway, looking at that, of course, seeing Rogue go through, it was powerful stuff from him coming into that. But also quite a surprising build coming out. Yeah. Classic. I mean, that second, build, uh, second game was obviously quite wild when it came to the build orders of Classic, and I would have loved to see that build without the flaws that obviously happened, without Lynx entering the main base, without mm -hmm. that speed prism going down with a Colossus inside of it, even though by then maybe it didn't look that good, yeah. but I just wonder what happens if he's yeah. able to hide that build just a little bit longer, and then maybe he can force out some roaches, and that would obviously be the dream, right? Or even just early on Bane Links, but now I think that Rogue just saw it all a little bit too early, but yeah, yeah. I still love the idea, and I love throwing a curveball right there. It's group stage, you may as well. I'll hear from you in a second, Todd, as we are ready to hear from the winner, of course. It, it is Rogue advancing to the round of eight. <laughs> Thank you very much, James. And it was the last match of the day, and Rogue is the one who advances to the round of eight. First of all, congratulations. Um, and sorry. Um, oh, let's talk about the first game. For, uh, the, the first game. You made a Nidus, like in Katowice. So did you think about that when you did that? 축하드립니다. 이제 8강 진출하셨는데요. 이제 첫 번째 게임부터 얘기를 할게요. 이제 땅굴망을 다시 하셨는데 이제 카토비츠에서도 하셨었잖아요. 약간 그거를 좀 이렇게 생각하고 다시 하신 건가요? 아, 아니요. 그러, 그건 생각한 건 아니고 어, 도우 형이 너치오 선수랑 할때 두판다 악한 드랍을 하, 하길래 저랑 할 때는 안할 거라고 생각하고 어, 불사조나 공석 사도를 맞춤으로 한 건데 어, 서, 서로 빌드가 좀 꼬여가지고 그런 어좀 서로 말렸던 것 같은데 그래도 프로브를 좀 많이 잡아가지고 좀 유리하게 게임을 할수 있었던 것 같아요. So actually, I didn't really expect. Um, uh, I was not thinking about the Katowice build. I just thought about the game he had against Nurgio, and I saw him. I expected him to do the Archon drops, but and or go. No, sorry. So I. I thought about that and I thought he wouldn't do the same thing and he would go uh, rather Phoenixes. And that's why I, I went for this build, but actually he didn't. And But I I caught a lot of probs and I, that's why I could be ahead and win this game. Um, you look more comfortable than the other Zergs uh, to, to go into the late game. How, how, how come? 다른 저거 선수들보다 약간 후반에 가는 걸좀 이렇게 편하게 하시는 것 같은데 왜 그러신 건가요? 어, 저는 저그가 후반을 가도 프로토스전이랑 해도 어, 나쁘지 않다고 생각을 많이 해가지고 근데 좀 맵에 따라 좀 다르긴 한데 그래도 할만하다고 생각하고 있거든요. 그래가지고 근데 좀 스타일 차이인 것 같아요. 전제 생각은 저는 원래 워낙 운영을 좋아하기 때문에 그런 것 같아요. So I think in the PVZ, the Zergs are pretty good in the late or pretty strong. Well, of course, it depends on the maps. But it's also, it's my style. Uh, my style. I like playing micro game. So it's just uh, the kind of difference. So now you're going into round of eight and you will have to face stronger players. So do you have any secret build, secret cards? Is it 8강부터 더 진짜 잘하는 선수를 만날 텐데 약간 히든 카드가 많으신가요? 어 아니 일단 근데 히든 카드를 좀 생각을 한 적은 없고 그냥 호텔에서 그냥 뭘 할까 생각을 하다 보면은 그래도 옛날에 
쓰던 빌드 같은 게 생각이 나더라고요. 그래가지고 그렇게 생각하는 거 말고는 딱히 준비한 거는 많이 없는 것 같아요. Well, honestly, I don't really have like secret builds, but when I go back to my hotel, I'm thinking about the uh, former builds I used to do, and I was like, hmm, that could be good, but not really. Okay, do you have any last words for your fans? 제 마지막으로 팬들에게 한마디 부탁드립니다. 아, 일단은 어, 늦은 시간까지 계속 응원해 주신 팬들 너무 감사드리고 그래도 어, 팔강 이렇게 좀 쉽게 올라간 것 같은데. 어, 저 작년처럼 꼭 이번에도 좋은 성적 낼수 있도록 하겠습니다. So thank you for all the fans cheering for me at this late time of the day. And I think I had a pretty easy road to the, my qualification to the round of eight. And I hope to have a really good results like last year. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. And best of luck in your next of the competition. Back to you guys. Really good results is a little bit of an understatement from last year as uh, kind of took it all. Uh, so it was a really, really good result. And uh, it's good to see though him actually advance on forwards and kind of get a few thoughts from him as well. Uh, Todd, we were talking about kind of the builds coming into that last series and how they played out. Were you, were you as surprised as maybe Roddy kind of going into that last game especially and how the series played out as a whole? Um, I was just expecting Classic to maybe be, maybe play slightly better in general. Okay. Uh, I think in game one, like he did put up a pretty good fight with the one push that he had, like, you know, I'm the supply guy, right? So I was looking at the supply and mm -hmm. there was a big difference, but somehow he put up a pretty darn good fight, this given all old. things yeah. and mm -hmm. really pushed, uh, pushed Rogue to the limits. And uh, yeah, here after, after the Nidus, it didn't feel like he was particularly that far behind. It's just like Rogue. Artosis was right, I'm gonna say. It. You know, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna hear this very often, but Artosis <laughs> was right. When we oh. hit, when we head into the mids to late game, yeah, I really feel like Rogue is in his comfort zone, and he he, he just answered that. that question as yeah. well, where he said you know like, that. "Does Artosis know his stuff?" Huh. Sometimes. Isn't that weird? Huh. But Rogue doesn't know you. I think it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, his answer was very <laughs> simplistic as well uh, about that when he was asked in the interview. It's like, yeah. well, what do you know that the other Zergs don't know? And he's like. Basically, I just like macro games and late games. So <laughs> it's that simple for Rogue, apparently. Yeah. That's how it is. It is good, though, to have him kind of almost not necessarily breeze through, but do very well to get through here in this fashion that he has done. It's always nice to, especially after our uh, defending world champion, mm. still in contention mm. in the running here to try and kind of stop some of these young whippersnappers from actually getting the spot, like Sarah, like Maru. It's going to be difficult, I think, because they are so powerful at this point, but it is still nice to have him alive in this tournament, right? Oh, of course. I mean, it, this is like one of the main guys that you want to end up watching, the defending world champion. I mean, yeah. he's really one of the guys that can win again. I mean, as, as much as you want to say that Sarah and Maru, the series he's had against Maru this year have been close. He has looked just as good as always against Protoss and his ZVZ. I mean, it's ZVZ. You never know. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see how that I turns wonder, out. I wonder what you were going to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely with Rogue. It is like how in often other sports they're often like, oh, that's a big game player. You know, he shows up in the big games. Mm -hmm. Rogue is definitely a big tournament player, right? Like the smaller yeah. the tournament, it also seems like sometimes he wings it a little bit. But yeah, I mean, we saw it early this year in Katowice, of course, BlizzCon last year. And when he was really on the ropes, and he had to win Super Tournament. He did it back then. Yeah. So he definitely seems to know when to peak. But I'm not sure if I'm convinced yet. Like, I thought this looked overall good. But I mean, that first game is a Nidus. Mm -hmm. And I think that second game, that's such an off game that I can't really read that much into it. It's like, going to take a little more. I mean, uh, are you blown Here away by this performance? I don't okay, know. Okay, so Roddy, uh, you got to clear this up for me. <laughs> yeah. Because you're telling me that Classic's the best Protoss in the world. Oh, and yeah. then Rogue 2 owes him, and you're like, I'm not really convinced. Hey, yeah, what did he have to do? Speed, well, not Nidus. Not Failed or, Nidus into win. Not Nidus, <laughs> and not, like, be the Speed Prism build. I mean, come on. It's a freaking Speed Prism opening. Like, it's his fault that Classic went Speed Prism? No, that's prism? not his fault, but that doesn't mean that I'm, like, blown away yet. I'm just not sold yet. I think, <laughs> no, it's good. I'm not being overly critical. I'm just, like, I don't want to jump on the hype train and be like, Rogue is as good as he's ever been before because I couldn't really see that in these games. We need an extra show after this. <laughs> after this I mean, maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe I'm a negative Nancy over here, but I'm just, like, I, I've, I feel like I've seen better out of him.